Anyway, good evening. I think um, I should start. And, um, mm, you know, the beauty about um, um, this live program is that even if I speak, afterwards people are still able to follow. I've realized a number of people actually do watch this live uh, broadcast after I'm actually done. So I don't feel it's there is necessary for me to, to it's necessary for me to see it and wait for people to to join in because you can always watch. So I think uh, today, of course, um, there are two uh, two important issues that I would want to I would, I would want to draw your attention to. Of course, the commemoration of um, you know the um, the the death of um, uh, uh, Arabi, and uh, though I must, I think let me not get there because I haven't gotten the confirmation about Tabukawana. What is the confirmation? What is it? Is it is it confirmed about Tabukawana? I've seen I've seen it on social media, but it's not yet confirmed. I haven't confirmed it myself, rather. I haven't confirmed it. Anyway, let me put that as let me put uh, that aside. Um, I'll talk about it um, uh, later on. Um, Hmm. Anyway, let me mention this. I have to mention this. You see, there are a number of people that have been talking to me, that have been talking to me relating to the conversation over GBM na na Bachimba A number of people have been talking to to me about it. Some of them they have been uh, told to talk to me by uh, at least I can confirm somebody told me that uh, he was talking to a GBM. And the GBM was not happy with what I said. Bakambuili also called me personally and expressed his, uh, um, you know, his sentiments about what I said. And of course, other people have been also talking about it. Now, I just want to put this one out of the way. The issue is that uh, whatever I said, whatever I said, I'm not retracting anything. I'm not retracting anything. What I said is the truth. Even Wakambuidi, when he called me, I told him that what I said, I stand by it, and I strongly believe it is the truth. There is nothing that I lied. Uh, but GBM, I still maintain that. And uh, I hope people would be able to go beyond, um, you know, uh, politics and not take this personal. Some people are trying to say, no, you are like somebody was telling me that, no, I insulted by GBM. I never insulted by GBM. I never insulted by GBM. Neither did I insult Wakambui. I never did. I never insulted them. I was just reacting to their uh, conversation, which came into on social media. That's what I was doing. And I thought it was important for me to make that reaction, to remind the duo where we are coming from to remind them i thought it was necessary and i couldn't do it on the phone call or whatever whatever i couldn't so i had to bring it out here and so all of you who are coming to me talking to me about Bakambuiri, about our gbm and in a way even asking me to apologize i think you are dead wrong you are dead wrong you are dead wrong why are you dead wrong? It is not me. It is not me who should be apologizing. It is Vakambuidi and GBM who should be apologizing. Vakambuidi and our GBM should apologize for having such sentiments on PF and talking like that on other candidates. They should apologize. Those are senior members of the party. They are part of the MCC and they, you know, deliberately, deliberately, infused that kind of um, um, division in the party, I think that was not right. I say it deliberately because I don't think that recording came out by accident. No, no. Those three knew what they were doing. They wanted to send a message. 
but their message was wrong. It is them who were wrong. GBM, you are very wrong. You can't say that. I mean, I even don't understand. How are you going to, how are you going to face your fellow uh, candidates and the fellow senior PF members in your, in your MCC meetings? How are you going to face them? They will be looking at you as people that are sitting on the edge about to exit. You said it. In Enkaya, if this person wins, me, I will go. So how are you going to face those others? How are you going to face Mundubi? And this is not about Mundubi, because some of you, you would like to say, no, hey, Mundubi, Mundubi is telling you to say this, Mundubi is telling you, forget it. Nobody sends Shilifatayari on what to say. I say what, what I think. So no one can, you know, send me to say this, this. No, forget it. It is, I didn't start this story. You started it. But GBM Bakambuidi, you started this story, not me. You started this story. I am only reacting like many others. Other people also have reacted. And I, I made my also my comments. I made my comments. And surely, surely I still maintain that the damage that you did to PF, up to today, PF has not recovered from the damage that you that you that you inflicted on PF. And you coming today wanting to be president of PF, it is actually uh, absurd, really. It is absurd. A party that you wanted to destroy, and today you come back and you want to say, no, you, you want to be president. And you are saying, no, if, we, if this one wins, me, I'm going to go out. I mean, that's not acceptable. That's not right. So I've got nothing to apologize, and I've got nothing to regret over what I said, Pari Wakambuli Nava GBM. And all those who have been coming to me, I've been able to tell them. I'm glad that I was able to tell Wakambuli straight, uh, you know, through a, a, a phone conversation that, uh, that, that, that we had. Yeah. I mean, that's me. That's me. I say things as they are. So having said that, let me move away. Let me move away. But before I come to talk about Baaka in the Ichidema, let me also mention one thing that uh, Va Ambrose, Va Ambrose, Minister of Defense, we are waiting as well as the home affairs. I know a number of people are talking about, uh, you know, the, the immigration as well as the police. I, I understand. We need the list of those recruits. We need the list of those recruits. Like I have said, you had about 500,000 people applying. You only need, is it 5,000 or 250,000? Whatever. But you only need 5,000. The number is too huge of people who are expecting to be on that list. Since the number is too huge, it is important that you release the few that you have selected, which is about 5,000 we are talking about. 5,000, release those 5,000 so that these others can know what to do. They can move on with their lives. At the moment, you are holding the whole lot of those young people that have made applications you are holding them at ransom and they can't really uh, think positively or proactively because some of them might be thinking i might be uh, i might be selected so if you release the list and give them give yourselves ample time to organize yourselves so that these people can, can go and start the the training but at least release the list it is just a fair um, a fair appeal um, this is not uh, anything political. It is just reasonable. So please look into it. Release the list. Then you can, you know, look into the issues of uh, of training uh, thereafter. Then let me move to the issue of now President Hakainde Ichilema. President Hakainde Ichilema, I think now uh, today has been, I think maybe the third or fourth time that is calling out. President uh, Edgar Chagwalungu in public is eh? reaching out to him in public. I have an issue with that. I have an issue. But President Hakainde Ichilema, I have an issue with you uh, calling out Edgar Lungu, you know, to be with you, um, you know, to move with you, whatever. I have a I have a point. I have a I have an issue. Va Hakainde Ichilema. 
you are a Republican president now. You are the Republican president. You are the father of this nation, including of those who did not vote for you or those who don't agree with you like me. We, there is nothing that we can do. At the moment, you are the president of this country. You are ruling this country. So we can say whatever we want, but at the end of the day, we have to recognize this fact and admit, like I do, that yes, President Akainde Ichirema is the Republican president. You are the father of this country. And as such, if there is any issue, if there is any issue with anyone which you want to iron out, Imweva president, you are able to call anyone, whether ku state house, whether ku community house, and engage that person. If that person, you are not able to confront them one-on-one, -on -one, you have got powers, you have got people, you have got resources that you can send other people to go and deliver your message to whoever you want. So this issue that now you are, talk, you are bringing out, each time there is a national event, you come up and start calling out President uh, Edgar Chagwalungu. I think from your point of view, you might think that it is okay. And indeed, I mean, I might give you 5% out of 100 that you are trying to reach out. But you are doing it wrongly. You are doing it wrongly. You are president Haka in the You are doing it wrongly. What you are doing there is smokescreen. What you are doing there is hypocrisy. That's, that's what you are doing. From my point of view, that is not how you should reach out to President Edgar Chagwalungu and bring him close. That is not the way you should reach out. You cannot be standing up in a, at every opportunity when there is a, a national event and you start calling on President uh, Edgar Chagwalungu. It is hypocrisy and it is ironic. It is ironic. You want to embarrass President Edgar Chagwalungu in the eyes of the general public, you want to embarrass him. You want people to notice that, look, he's not here. He's supposed to be here. He's not here. That is not how you reach out. That is not how you reach out. That is not in good faith. That is not calling President Edgar Lungu. According to me, I don't think you are calling President Edgar Lungu in good faith. You are calling out his name in public so that you can draw the attention of the public that President Edgar Lungo was supposed to be here, is not here. That's what you are doing. It's not reaching out. You are not trying to mend bridges here, no. You are trying to embarrass the man. You are trying to embarrass the man. Because surely, if you mean well, if you mean well, if you want to bring Edgar Lungo close, you would not be embarrassing him in public the way you are doing. Like I have said, I mean, you, 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 you can be a novice, as a president, you can be a novice as a president, but I'm sure by now you have understood the powers that are in that office where you are. I'm sure you have understood. That office is very powerful. It's very powerful. You can summon anyone. You can summon anyone. You can see anyone at any time. You can. This is a fact. Even myself, if you want, if you want to see me or anyone you want to see anyone, you can see them at any time that you want. And even Ed Galungu himself is a former president. But if you want to see him, you can see him. If you really have the intention, you can see him. If you want to talk to him, you can talk to him. Even now, you can pick a phone call and talk to him. You can pick a phone call and talk to him. But you want to come out, you know, like, like you care. No, no, you are not doing that. You are, uh, it, it's not acceptable. And I'm reacting because this is not the way you should handle this. You cannot be calling out him in public the way you are doing. You, why not reach out to him? Why not reach out to him? You could have reached out to him. And it is hypocrisy. It is hypocrisy. Hypocrisy in the sense that, you know, Whilst you are trying to, to come out like, you know, 
you 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 love Ed Galungu as a brother and you want to work with him, you want to share, you know, the same platform, the same table, and so on and so forth. You are busy doing bad things to President Ed Galungu. You are doing bad things to Ed Galungu. So it is not acceptable. It is not, it is wrong. And whoever is advising you that that is the way to go about it, they are dead wrong. They are dead wrong. If they are advising you that that is the way you should reach out to President Ed Galungu, they are dead wrong. I can run you through. Ed Galungu, yes, some of you will say, no, 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 it's okay. He can stay there and so on and so forth. I know some of you cadres who don't think properly, who are quite shallow in thinking, you would say, come on, he's, he's now a former president, so it's okay. I mean, he can go to hell, he can stay, he can whatever, we don't care about him. You have to remember that politics is about following. You have to remember that politics is about following. A person who has got following, don't underrate him. Imwe vakada vakada cheap cadres, you political novices, political you know night whatever what is the word katwish? You are being naive in politics. A person who has got a following, don't ignore that person. Don't ignore that person. Even me here, don't ignore me. Don't ignore me. And I know you don't ignore me. You, you don't ignore me. You give me respect. And the way you give me respect is just that the way, the, the way you show your respect is the wrong way. Like in many other things. You recognize me. You recognize Sri Tayari. You can deny it in your, within yourselves that no, no, no. I mean, he's just a useless guy. He's just a joker. He just talks whatever, whatever, whatever. You can say all that. But here I am, I'm talking, you are listening. You are listening. And if I say something that you feel like, mm, that's how you arrest me. You react, except that you react in a wrong way. You recognize me, but your recognition is, 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 is wrongly. It is in the wrong way. You recognize me by arresting me, thinking that you are going to silence me. I've told you, you will never silence me. I will die with my voice. And I'm telling you, even when I'll be dead there, will be talking. Mukalafu makumanda mule for voice ya ni mumi mumi tuenu. You'll be listening to my voice. I'll be haunting you, especially you bad people. I'll be haunting you. You'll be listening to me, talking to you. Mukapapasan. So you can't silence me. You can't. So you have to make sure that all you also get the following, Muamuchindika, you respect that person. Now, if myself, you respect me, which you do, you respect me. Because that you, you wouldn't be reacting to what I do. You react to what I say. Meaning, you, you listen and you follow me, which is very good. Continue and do a proper reaction. Not a wrong reaction. Now, if for me, you follow me and you respect me, what about Edgar Chagwalungu? Edgar Chagwalungu has genuine one million votes. One million votes. That guy has got following. No jokes about it. That guy is... Nishimbi Pariyadi. Edgar Nishimbi. You cannot ignore President Ed Galungu. And if there is anyone among those who are around the president who think that you can ignore President Edgar Chagwalungu, you are dead wrong. You are dead wrong. I mean, look how, look how apprehensive you are each time Ed Galungu steps out. Look how apprehensive you are. And imagine if Ed Galungu would actually be announcing he eh? would actually be announcing to say, today I'm going this side. Hey, tomorrow I'm going this side. If he would be announcing, do you think he, you would handle it? Eh? If he would be announcing, like tomorrow, 
is going to be, I think he will be at UCZ Mutende. Uh, for example, I'm just giving you because I, I know about this, this information uh, that he has been invited to Mutendere, Mutendere UCZ Church. So imagine if we, there was Edgar Lungu had that team, eh, the way they have invited him, and then he comes up and he tells people today to say, uh, I'm praying at Mutendere a UCZ Church today, or the way it is going to happen tomorrow. He announces. Imagine how many people would be coming. Imagine how many people would be following him. But he has taken a low profile. He doesn't invite. He doesn't announce. That's why we just see pictures after he has prayed. After he has prayed, that's when we see the pictures. If Edgar Lungu would walk out and, you know, people know where, the, where he is, I mean, you would see how people would be flocking to him. If Edgar Lungu would actually do the politics, you keep saying Edgar Lungu, Edgar Lungu is not... Uh, uh, he's doing politics. Ed Galungu is doing politics. If Ed Galungu he was doing politics indeed, do you think Hakainde Ichidema can rule this country? If Ed Galungu decides to be to be problematic, if Ed Galungu tries to be uh, you know problematic, do you think Hakainde Ichidema would rule this country? I'm telling you, Mule Mutasha Ed Galungu, for being the man that he is, a sober man that he is. If Ed Galungu would start responding to Haka Inde Ichirema's utterances, do you think Haka Inde Ichirema will get away with it? He would not. Ed Galungu is respected by so many people, including those people that you fear. He's respected. This is a fact. So don't cheat yourself that you can simply just ignore the man. And say, let's go on with the country. Let's go on ruling. That you are dead wrong. So, recognize that man and the power that he has. Recognize that man and the power that he has. And the power that he has is that he has one million people behind him. One million people behind him. And today, it is not even one million. That one million might have even multiplied by two. Because even those that voted for President Haka in the Ichirema, the, a number of them have turned around. They have appreciated, they have compared the leadership of Edgar Lungu and the leadership of President Edgar Chago, uh, uh, Haka in the Ichirema. They have compared. People have compared. And if you them here, what I'm telling you is the truth. It is the truth. People now have compared. Don't cheat yourself that people still think of Edgar Lungu as a bad president. They have seen on a number of issues, on a number of prices, prices of fuel, prices of minimum, name it, even in, in corruption, they have compared, they have seen, no, this man is better. So this is not a man that you can ignore. Uh -uh. This is not a man that you can be playing around with. You, you, this is not a man. And you should be thanking God that the man has that kind of attitude. Imagine if Edgar Lungu had, got an, had an attitude like some of us. Mdala ni kwata one million people behind me. Ero wa mkula iminafe chisawawa. Ichisawawa. Ichisawawa. Eh? Wa mkula anda ndapadi ni mdala. Ah. Hey. Imagine mdala ni kwata chirufa tayari na kwata one million behind. Ichina chalonga tuteka wonse. Ngatu teka wonse. But that man, I mean, lesa katushina eno fwa mpanga ule na ena. Ali mpanga fefi yako. Ali mpanga fefi yako. Because really mdala, nga ali wafi ati, ah, eh, kwa ati ni wakambuiri. Imagine wakambuiri na wakata one million people behind. <laughs> Tu mwabe kata. Imagine wa GBM na wakata one million people behind. Kutu mwabe kata. Eh, but lesa ali tutemwa. God loves this country. He, the man who has the real influence, the real power as opposition, he has made him to be very sober and calm. And that is our, that is our prayer. So I'm telling you that don't underrate that man. And whoever is around the president who say, no, 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 ignore Edgar Lungu. No, don't, don't. So if you don't have to ignore, what should you do? You are right, 
ba haka inde ichire. If indeed you mean it, you need to breed to 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 to, uh, to bridge the gap. You need to bridge the gap between yourself ba haka inde ichire and Ed Galungu. You need it. You absolutely need it. Bridging the gap between wa Ed Galungu and wa Haka Inde Ichinema would actually help this country big time. Because wa Ed Galungu, where he is, he has got his own connections. Wa Ed Galungu, he has got his own influence somewhere. Even with China. Wa Haka Inde Ichinema, you have been failing to go to China. If you bridge the, 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 the gap between wa Haka Inde Ichinema na wa, Jid, na wa Ed Galungu, you would actually send Wajibba Waka in the Ichirem by Ed Galungu to go to China. Waka in the Ichirem by Ed Galungu has a good relationship with the Chinese. And if we had a good relationship right now, Wa Ed Galungu would actually help in that. Wa Ed Galungu would help in many other issues. But as long as there is this acrimony, it will be difficult for us to utilize the potentials, the, the abilities, the resources of President Edgar Chagwalungu. We need him on the table. This is not whatever, whatever, uh, this is real. We need Edgar Chagwalungu on the table. Even just to have public, op you know, pu uh, public opinion is very important. Even just for public opinion, it is very important. But as long as this relationship continues like this, it's not going to be good. It's not going to be good. So you need to bridge that gap. We need President Edgar Chagwalungu, you know, on the national agenda. Don't fear him. Don't fear him that, no, if you bring him in, whatever, whatever, he's going to do this, he's going to do this, he's going to come back and whatever. No, that man is very reasonable. A number of people don't and don't know President Edgar Chagwalungu. A number of you don't know. Because he's quiet and he listens more than talking. But by the fact that he's quiet, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have the knowledge. By the fact that Edgar Chagwalungu is quiet, it doesn't mean that he doesn't have the knowledge. It doesn't mean that he doesn't have the information. He has the information. And he has a lot of it information. He has a lot of information, I can assure you that. I've engaged, I go to him like to go and learn. And the information that he brings out the wisdom that it brings out. I'm telling you there are very few people that can match up to the wisdom of President Edgar Chagwalung. So we need him and utilize what he has whilst he's alive. We shouldn't wait for him when he's gone like Vahara B. Then you start uh, writing eulogies, eh? Nama praises. Hey, I learned this to you from whatever. I learned this. Hey, whatever, whatever, whatever. Let's use the man. He's alive. Let's use him. The man is not, is, is, is not a danger to this nation. The man is an asset to this nation. He's an asset to President Haka in the Let's engage him. We need him. We need to get something out of him when he's alive. But where we are coming from, what is it now? Where we are coming from? Let's go where we are coming from. Is it that because now, the way it is coming out, the way Ed Bahaka in the HDMI is coming out, he's coming out like Ed Galungu just doesn't want to pitch up on these na national events. That's the way he's coming out. Yes, he is in a way trying to say, no, 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 coming. No, but that is ironical. That is ironical. He doesn't mean it. He wants to, people to say, this man doesn't want to be part of the national events. And yes, some of you might really judge President Edgar Chagwalungu that he doesn't want to be part of the national events. But let's look where we are coming from. This is Edgar Lungu who stood up, who left home and came to, to Hero Stadium to hand over power in a nice way after conceding defeat. And he even said, I'm going to come and ceremoniously hand over power ceremoniously hand over power what happened on that day when president edgar chagwalungu came
to hand over power ceremoniously. What happened? He was booed by the UPND cadres. What did President Hakainde Ichirema do? Did President Hakainde Ichirema do anything? Or has President Hakainde Ichirema done anything? Imwe huwa around the presidency. I want you to hear this. And I want you to consider this. Because I know you are watching. What happened during the inauguration? During the swearing-in ceremony? What happened? Do you think that was good? Do you think that was good? Do you think your silence during that inauguration and up to today, do you think it pleases President Edgar Chagwalungu? Surely, what if I were in, Ed, in Haka in the HNMA's position, I would have reprimanded uh, the, uh, the cadres. I would have reprimanded them. At least I would have reprimanded them, even if I didn't mean it. But at least I would have reprimanded them. And okay, fine, you didn't do it then. Later on, you would have come up somewhere, somehow. Instead of calling out his name to say, hey, I know you are watching. Hey, I'm, calling, I'm calling out on you. I recognize you. You are watching. Instead of doing that, you, 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 you would use such a platform and tender an apology so that people can see that you are a man of integrity. You are a man of your word. You are a man who wants to unite this country. I mean, what would it take even just to come up and say, you know what? My brother, Edgar Chagwalungu is not here. I understand. Maybe he could be scared of what happened at Hero Stadium. I was not happy what happened at Hero Stadium. And I want to tell to tell people that that is not the way we should treat leaders. And to President uh, Edgar Chagalungu, I want to apologize on behalf of the people that behaved in the manner that they did. Going forward, I want to assure you there will be nothing of that sort. Just that, I'm telling you, that a small statement within one minute would mean a lot. Would mean a lot. Such that next time, even when there is a function, if Ed Galungu doesn't pitch up, people will be like, mm, but come on, the president apologized. The president reached out to him. Why is he not coming? They will see problems in Ed Galungu. They will see, say, no, this man has got a problem. But with the way you embarrassed him, how do you expect him to just come just like that? So that incident, don't, don't take it lightly. That incident is very serious. And then the other point, the other point, which you need to consider, I am really just trying to give counsel from my point of view. People that used to insult President Edgar Chagwalungu when he was in power, these are the people that you, you are calling national heroes. These are the people that you are calling freedom fighters. These are the people that are part of your government. These are the people that you want to come and sit with Edgar Lungu on the same table. People that called Edgar Chagwalungu names, you have, you, have, you have honored them in this country. And you are calling on Edgar Lungu to say, come, we work together. How is he going to come and work together with people that were insulting, that were insulting him? You should think about these things very critically. I'm not, you know, being emotive or anything. I'm just pointing out reality as it is. People that were insulting, these are the people that he, whatever. Of course, I'm not saying that those people that he, uh, said did bad things or whatever, whatever, should not be forgiven. No, they should be forgiven. They should be forgiven. But you see, Vaaka in the like I told you, you are the father of this nation at this point. You can talk to some of these people to say, you know what? 
I've appointed you as peers. I've appointed you as whatever, whatever. But I want a relationship with this man. I want us to work together. I'm asking you, can you go to his house? Can you go to his house and go and apologize? Go and apologize. At least that is what you do if you want to, you know, bridge the gap between yourself and other people. Go and apologize. And if these people do that, I'm sure Edgar Chagalungu would consider that. I'm sure Edgar Lungu would not feel uncomfortable to come and be, you know, on the same table to share the cake. We are cutting the cake. I don't think he will be uncomfortable. He will be happy to say, okay, we have, we have, we have buried the bridges. But you can't expect him, the people that were insulting him, to be eating a cake with him, to be tossing uh, wine with him, and yet they called him these names. But I'm insisting that it doesn't mean that they, whatever they did should be permanent. No, it can be resolved. And one of the ways is what I'm talking about. Is what I'm talking about. Apart from that, I want you to hear me very well. Apart from that, whenever you have an opportunity, you keep referring directly or indirectly to President Edgar Chagwalungu as a thief. You have come, you have called him a common a, a thief. You have common called him a common thief. You have abused him, you have convicted him in the eyes of the public. Each time you have an opportunity, you refer to President Edgar Chagwalungu as really somebody that ran a very corrupt government and himself is very corrupt. Himself has amassed wealth that is just eating together with his family. How can you, how can you come up today and call out his name? How can you come up today and say, I recognize you? When you have an opportunity, each time you have an opportunity, you, you, you cast aspersion on this man. How can you bridge bridges? How can you reconcile with, the, with this man? I strongly believe that you are the one who has to do more. Because you are the one, number one, who is a president. You, number two, you are the one who is, you know, have got activities of appointing and of talking and everything. Edgar Lungu is quiet. So you are the one who has to do more in this instance. You need to stop that abuse that you, 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 you constantly keep showering on President uh, Haka in the, uh, Edgar Chagwalungu. You can't, at every turn, you abuse the man. At every turn, you convict the man. Apart from that, look, the last time that we, there was that funeral, eh? the last time there, there was a funeral, and Edgar Chagwalungu attended, whilst he was sitting with you at showgrounds, his son was being grilled by the, by the, uh, by the enforcement agent. And time and again, you go for the wife, you go for the children. I mean, how can you reconcile with this man? How can you reconcile with this man? How can this man come in public and feel respected, feel appreciated? With a clear mind, how? When you'll be sitting there looking at you to say, this is the man that arrested my wife, that, that, is, that is after my wife. This is the man that is after my children. This is the man that is after me. I think that will be pretense of the highest order. I think that will be pretense of the highest order. Even me, I don't think I'll do that. I don't think I can do that. You can't keep on persecuting President Edgar Chagwalungu. And then, whenever you have a function, you start calling out his name. Whenever you have a function, you start calling out his name. No, you can't do. You can't do that. Be proud.
pragmatic. Do something that can work, not what you are doing. What you are doing is not working. What you are doing is not going to bring you closer. And if you think that you don't need President Edgar Chagwalungu, one day you remember me. One day you remember me. You have got a lot to benefit yourself as president by being in, in communicado with the President Edgar Chagwalungu. This nation has something to benefit by President Edgar uh, Chagwalungu being you know, in a good relationship with the head of state. And this I'm saying without anything or whatever, whatever, I'm just stating things as they are. And trust me, if you can work on that, you would actually help this country. And you would help even your legacy. You want to have a legacy whereby, you know, throughout your presidency, you can't talk with your former president. That is not a good legacy. At, what, at some point, you need to come together. You need to converge. But this will not happen by accident. There must be deliberate actions. Deliberate actions such as looking at where we are coming from. What is it? How can we, you know, repair the damage that has been done? How can we, you know, manage some of these issues? I'm not saying President Edgar Chagwalungu is innocent or is guilty. No. But there are ways that we can sort out these issues to avoid embarrassing the president, to uh, the former president, to avoid stressing the former president. There are ways that we can handle some of these things. And going forward, we can look at how can we go forward. We can look at how we can go forward. It is very important the unity of this nation would actually start by this relationship, by mending this relationship between the two of you. Because like I've said, both of you are important. You, the Republican president, you are important. But equally, the former president is important. And by the way, the former president is part of government. Once a president, you are part of government for life. You are part of government. So why do you want to continue this acrimony? It is not benefiting you. It is not benefiting the, the, the nation. So stop what you are doing. If you mean it, if you are really genuine about reaching out to him, I'm telling you, reach out to him directly. Reach out to him directly. Engage him genuinely. It will work out. I do talk to President Edgar Chagwalungu. And I'm telling you that some of these things that I'm saying here are things that I've heard him talk about. Like the way he was booed, because some of you might not, uh, you, 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 maybe you might not have an opportunity to hear him complain. But he didn't like it. He didn't like it. He didn't like it. And he has said it, he didn't like it at all. Especially that the president was sitting there and didn't do anything, didn't defend him. He didn't like it. Therefore, I mean, at least me, I have heard him talk about that. So you should know. You bored him, he didn't like it. He didn't like it. And he didn't like it more especially that the president was sitting there and he couldn't protect him. President Edgar Lungu doesn't like it when President Ed, uh, Hakainde Hichirema is referring to him as a thief, referring to him as a man that is superintended on a very corrupt government. He doesn't like it. And he keeps saying, if there is something that they have against me, why don't they come? So that at least I, I can go to court, whether I'm convicted or I'm acquitted, at least. Other than being every day, I'm being convicted in the public, in the eyes of the public. He doesn't like it. President Edgar Chagolungu is a parent. He doesn't like it when his children are being, you know, uh, pulled around, taken to Kuma Court, Shana, Shana. He doesn't like it. And most of all, President Edgar Chagolungu loves his wife. He loves his wife big time. And it really stresses him to see his wife being 
dragged around kuma shani shani kuma shani shani a little property that they built there you are you are, you are, you are grabbing it you are, come on he doesn't like it he doesn't like it president edgar chagwalungu doesn't like it to see people that used to insult him and for insulting him president hakainde ichilema is spreading his hands on them canonizing them he doesn't like it and surely who would like it anyway who would like it i've just told you i'm giving you hints i'm not a presidential spokesperson for uh, president hakainde ichilema i'm not his spokesperson but i'm a public lawyer a public lawyer who speaks for everyone who speaks for everyone including you baka in the chilema i've done it before in the past where we are coming from and i know i'll do it even in the future and you will appreciate me chirufatari is only hated when he's speaking against you then you don't like him ngefini baka mbuit na wa gbm they don't like me because i'm telling them the truth they don't like me and they are saying hey tayari is insulting us no fishing off on them here what you did is very wrong what you did is very wrong that audio is wrong you should apologize for it and don't just see you know brush off things eh some people they were sharing pictures hey tayari chimunyonge eh hey the you, the pf leaders have united you think he, you think uh, uh, given Rubinda is happy with that with that recording eh you think other members of pf senior members of pf are happy with that recording they are not and me i'm just telling you the truth vaka in the i'm just telling you the truth and surely if you consider some of the things that i'm talking about we would actually move we would actually move consider some of the points that i've raised here consider them i think he, i have i have done my part on 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 on, on that one but look uh, we are talking about democracy we are talking about building this country uniting this country arresting people and throwing them muscles for a long time it is not right these people that you have arrested who were protesting surely they were harmless surely they didn't mean any harm why are you punishing them like that they are still muscles why didn't you release them people are ready to meet the conditions and you are still holding them to a papata please release those people release them i think i will end here for tonight thank you very much today is a saturday tomorrow is a sunday we're going to church why you see tomorrow i will do live live talk but i want you to phone in and express yourself tomorrow i'm going to give you a number and i will talk less i want you the young people to talk so you'll be calling in and you'll be expressing yourself i think for now i'm saying good night and uh, may god bless you thank you